God and you cannot have the kind of joy and peace that you desire. What can I do now? I know my heart is not right. Mm. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Hmm. Now, do you feel you need this rest in your heart? Oh, yes, Pastor. I told you my heart is not settled. My heart is not at peace. Only Jesus has the power to give peace to a troubled heart because he is the Prince of Peace. That's it, Pastor. That's the main prayer point. Tell the Prince of Peace to give me peace in my heart. No, but you will have to come to him. Remember he says, Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Then take me to him, Pastor. Mm -hmm. The dirty cup needs to be washed. First, your sins must be washed in the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I need His forgiveness. I need this heavy heart to be lightened. My cup needs to be washed. Then let us pray. The word of God says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Invite the Lord Jesus into your heart. Tell him to save you. Lord, there are so many things wrong with me. My heart is heavy. I am not happy. If all these are the results of my sin, Father, please forgive me. Now tell him you're sorry for all the sins you have committed. Lord, I am sorry for all my sins. Please, I apologize for all my wrongdoings that have brought this inexplicable sadness into my heart. Please, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Invite him into your heart and life as your Lord and personal Savior. Lord, please come into my heart. Take away this, this heavy burden. Lord, come into my life as my Lord and personal savior. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this wonderful experience. Thank you because your daughter has been saved and her name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I ask that you will perfect everything that concerns her life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. 
Oh, we thank God. It's all right. Oh. Mm. Madam, what has happened to you this evening is what is called the salvation experience. Today, you gave your life to Jesus Christ and you're born again. Mm. Now your name is written in the book of life. You're henceforth God's precious child. Mm. God has taken a special interest in everything about your life. Mm. Congratulations. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Ah, glory be to God. Now, before I take my leave, one more important thing. I should like to pray with your family. Oh, yes, Pastor. Please call them out. Angela! Dayo! Yes, Mom. Please come. The pastor would like to pray with us. Come, come, come. Let's kneel down. Pastor, we're ready. No. Where is their father? No, the prayer won't go on until he comes. He's not around. Where is he? This final blessing must include him. His presence determines this prayer. Pastor, please pray for the family. The father is not around. No. Where is he? Pastor, at least pray for these children. No. I have a charge of God to come to this place. And I am doing what the Lord asked me to do. I cannot continue this prayer except their father is here. That's impossible. Why? Children, please go back to your room. Madam, tell me about your husband. He's traveled. Where? Outside the country? Or are you hiding him? He's in jail. Jail? Interesting. And how did he get there? I put him there. You did? What did he do? He cheated me. He hurt me and the kids badly. He betrayed my love and my trust. Now what exactly did he do? He put a lady in the family way. Oh. And so another lady has a child for him. Yes. I became embittered. There was an argument and then a fight. He hit me and he injured me. Then I sued him for attempted murder. Mm. So you made him pay for his foolishness by putting him in jail? Yes. Mm. Now have you now forgiven him? Now that he has paid for his sins, have you now forgiven him? He betrayed me. Yes, he betrayed you. He cheated on you. He let you down. I know all that. He impregnated a lady and now have another child by that lady. But you've made him pay for all those things by making sure he's jailed. Now that he's jailed, you just have to forgive him. It's difficult. What's difficult? To forgive him. Even after he has been jailed for it? Yes. I see we have a problem here. What's it, Pastor? For if you forgive men their sins, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. But if 
you do not forgive men their iniquities, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your sins. Did you listen to that? Yes. It's difficult. It's difficult for you to forgive your husband even after you've got him jailed for his offense? Yes. Yes, Pastor. It's difficult. Oh my God. But all your sins have been forgiven and your iniquities washed away by the precious blood of the Lamb. You're not to pay for those horrible sins again because it has been paid for by the Lord Jesus once and for all. Now, is it not injustice if you hold against him the very same sins for which he has been forgiven? Look, our God is the God of justice.